In today's intermediate grammar lesson, we're going to look at the third conditional. Hello and welcome to another video. My name's Alex. In today's lesson, we're going to look at the third conditional in English from the point of view of an intermediate student. So we're going to look at an example sentence, talk about the meaning of the third conditional, the structure of the third conditional in terms of grammar. Also, we're going to talk about pronunciation and punctuation a little bit as well, which is important. And then I'm going to give you some scenarios and ask you to try to make some third conditional sentences from these scenarios. So let's get started and look at our example sentence. So our first example of the third conditional is, if you'd got up earlier, you wouldn't have been late. If you'd got up earlier, you wouldn't have been late. So before we think about the, the grammar of the sentence, let's focus on the meaning. So the first thing to point out is that this is a sentence or a structure which is talking about the past. So if you'd got up earlier, we're talking about the past here. So it's something that is not present, is not happening now, but it's finished completely in the past. And the other thing to consider is, are we talking about a real situation or a hypothetical situation? Are we imagining something that was different, that could have been different, but wasn't because it's already passed. So the answer to that is it's hypothetical, it's imaginary. So we're talking about the past and it's hypothetical because we're imagining something in the past and how it could have been different, but obviously it's only hypothetical, it's only in our mind because this thing has already happened. So if you think about it like this, if you'd got up, up earlier, but you didn't get up earlier, so that means it's in the past, you wouldn't have been late. That's when we're hypothesizing, but actually you were late. So if we take this sentence, if you'd got up earlier, you wouldn't have been late, and use this to look at the structure of the third conditional in terms of grammar. So the classic structure, we're going to start with the if clause. So we have if plus past perfect, if you'd got up earlier. So that apostrophe D in that is a contracted had. Past perfect is had plus the past participle. So if you had got up earlier, if plus past perfect, and then comma, after the second clause, you wouldn't have been late. So it's would plus have plus the past participle or the third form of the verb, whatever you want to call it. So there we have the structure, starting with the if clause, if past perfect, comma, would plus have, it's never have, has, sorry, it doesn't change for the person. So would plus have plus the past participle. Okay, and also when we're looking at this structure, it's important to think about if we have any changes when we swap the clauses. Okay, so if we put the if clause second. So if we have a look at another sentence, about with, with the third conditional as well, we can say we'd have arrived earlier if we hadn't got lost. Okay, so this is again the third conditional. We'd have arrived earlier if we hadn't got lost. Sorry, I'm just trying to read my writing here. So we'd have arrived earlier if we hadn't got lost. So we can see here we've, we've moved the if clause to the second part of the sentence. And the important thing to focus on here is if you do that, then we don't use a comma. So if you're using the if clause to start with, then we use a comma, but if we're moving it to the end, then no comma. Okay, and if we look at another sentence to focus on the pronunciation, our third example of the third condition, third conditional, we say, if I'd known she was there, I'd have visited. So if I'd known she was there, I'd have visited. So I want to focus on the pronunciation and also the fact that it's contracted, apostrophe D, if I'd known she was there, I'd have visited. So we have in the sentence two contracted words, apostrophe D, but actually they're different. So in the first clause, in the if clause, if I'd known, 
this apostrophe D is had, and in the second one, it is would. So these are all really important things that we need to bear in mind when we're thinking about the first conditional. The third conditional, sorry, is about the meaning, about the structure, about uh, pronunciation and contractions and what the apostrophe D actually is, and also about punctuation if we need a comma or not. Okay, so I'm going to give you three different scenarios of things from the past, and I'd like you to try to think of what could be a good third conditional sentence to use in each case. Okay, so our first scenario is your mum reminded you about your dad's birthday. So we know this is in the past, it doesn't matter when, let's say it was yesterday. Your mum reminded you about your dad's birthday. So I want you to think about hypothetically what would have happened if she hadn't reminded you, for example, okay? To try to make a third conditional sentence using the structure that we spoke about earlier, if past perfect would plus have plus the third form of the verb. So what could we say? Your mum reminded you about your dad's birthday. We can start with the if clause or we don't have to. So my example sentence in this case is, if you hadn't reminded me, I'd have forgotten about my dad's birthday. If you hadn't reminded me, I'd have forgotten about my dad's birthday. So if you hadn't reminded me, past perfect, I'd have forgotten. Apostrophe D in this case is would. I would have forgotten third form of the verb. You could switch it round and start with the other clause first if you wanted. It's all the same. Did you have the same sentence? Let me know in the comments. Okay, and our second scenario is you now realise the bus was a cheaper way to travel. You now realise the bus was a cheaper way to travel. So you made a trip, it's in the past, it's over and done with, and then after the trip, so let's say, for example, you travelled by train in that case, and now after the trip, you realise that you could have saved some money and you could have used the bus instead. So a third conditional sentence we could use in this case, this time I'm going to start, I'm going to put the if clause uh, at the end, and I can say, it would have been cheaper if we'd taken the bus. It would have been cheaper if we'd taken the bus. So we can see the structure here, would plus have plus the past participle, and then if plus past perfect at the end, and the meaning obviously in the past as well, and we can see in this sentence here we have no comma because we're not starting with the if clause. Let me know your sentence. There could be other examples here that would also be correct. So let me know in the comments. And our third scenario. You wanted to go to the beach, but you didn't have time. So you wanted to go to the beach, past but you didn't have time. So I want to think hypothetically, imaginary, about what would have happened if you did have time. So our third conditional sentence in this case, or my example of this is, if I'd had time, I'd have gone to the beach. If I'd had time, I'd have gone to the beach. So first of all, we can recognize the two contractions here, had and would. And we've got the perfect structure here as well, so it's a perfect example of the third conditional for this scenario. Again, is your sentence the same? Do you have a different sentence? Put it in the comments, and I'll let you know if it's correct. You could also try to make other examples of third conditional sentences and put them in the comments. I'll correct them for you. I'm happy to help. So thanks for watching the video today. I hope you like it. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, check out my website here, which has information on all the lessons I'm doing in January. So I'm doing 12 lessons this month. Uh, some of them are videos like this one, and some of them are going to be live, but you can see everything on my website there. Remember to follow me on social media, join my Facebook group, Learn English with Alex, and I'll see you next time.